Welcome everyone, uh, great to see you here. And today we're going to talk about market research in, as an, a growth tool for businesses. And it probably sounds pretty boring, but it won't, believe me. So we really want to spend next 30 minutes in the really good relaxed conversation about how to, how to cook market research properly and how to help you know, businesses to grow and show you some fun uh, and not fun examples. Uh, you know what, I will try to do the trick that I tried earlier to share my screen uh, with the presentation. Uh, just bear with me. And in the meantime, um, just to uh, help you navigate with the panel, uh, down, uh, down there is, you can see the panel and uh, the chat box in there. So you can type your messages, say who you are, you know, where you are in the world. And also you can type your questions in there as well. Um, and uh, we will take them after, after the main presentation. Um, let me introduce myself. Uh, in case you don't know me, uh, I'm Maria and I'm managing director of uh, Fastuna, um, fastuna.com. And we are market research platform for rapid consumer tests. And I'm also guilty of igniting businesses with consumer insights for the last 20 years. Uh, I also have my colleagues uh, today with me is Michaela Faber, uh, who will, uh, you know, who will monitor the chat and make sure, you know, that uh, you hear us well. And we also have Marat, who is our social media guru and tech guru in the background. Um, so, um, yeah, I hope you can hear me well. And if you cannot hear me well, please type in the chat, whatever. So, uh, so this webinar is actually is a sort of demystification of consumer research. So we will show you the easier practical ways uh, how to use market research as an effective tool to drive business growth. Uh, and uh, what we want to do, we want to really demonstrate how to get the most out of your market research and how to cook it properly. And I use this word because I just love the metaphor from my one of my colleagues who shared with me that market research is all about do, uh, having the right ingredients and variety of market research methods and good recipes to get maximum out of your market research. So let's dive in. Um, you know, the, every good presentation starts with the quote. <laughs> so <laughs> I am not an exception. I love, I, I love good quotes. So this is my absolutely favorite marketing guru. And I just love this quote about uh, don't find consumers for your product, but find products for your customers. And this is so, so true. And uh, for me is, is just the essence of market research and the essence of every successful business is that every successful business should really listen to the needs of their customers, of their consumers. And being myself as an entrepreneur as well, it's like this quote is like a lamppost to keep myself focused, not what I think my customers need, but what they really need. And how I figure this out, I actually do research. Oh, but okay, sorry, I got carried away. So let's start from, let's start from the very beginning. Um, so any business, and you can see this nice chart in here. So any business is a system where there is you, your business, your target audience, and the product that you create for them, plus it's marketing. So in an essence, you're creating a product that satisfies needs of people, right? So people pay you money, which in turn can be invested in product development or could be spent in other areas of business growth. Uh, so it's kind of a feedback loop we're seeing here between your business and your customers. And this feedback is called money. 
So, and we all know that monetary feedback is great. This is where your kind of your, st your stakeholders in the company ask you where the money are. If you're a business owner, you know, you always sit here, calculate your revenues and money are uh, so-called hot metrics. So you can count them. And they're very reliable indicators of the quality of product and advertising that you are creating. But there are two things that money actually cannot buy. So the first thing is that monetary feedback always delayed. So it comes after you launch the product or add your advertising. So when the money and efforts have already been invested. So basically you have to spend a lot to get back the feedback. And another thing that money cannot buy is why. And my colleague was asking who the heck is that, but this is Dodge, a very famous dog over the internet. So it's just really asking why, why is not working, especially when your business is kind of a trouble, you know, your market share goes down, uh, the product is not selling well. So this is when you start asking the question, what, questions why. What is the exact problem? What we can do better? And to gain a deep understanding about it, you need to get answers to the questions and you get these answers. The best answers you can get is from your target audience, from your customers. I uh, just want to give you this amazing story uh, I heard from Rory Sutherland. And Rory is my another absolutely favorite guy. He is a vice, a vice chairman of Ogilvy in the UK. And he's actually the guy who democratized so-called BS, behavioral science for marketers, creators, and advertisers. So he told this wonderful story that I like to share with you. So there was a one little cafe in his neighborhood that uh, has, has been struggling and it has been, it happened before COVID actually. So people just simply didn't come in this cafe. So cafe owners didn't know what to do. They thought that maybe they should be moving somewhere else uh, to a busier road or maybe change the menu. So they didn't know what was happening. Uh, so, there was all sorts of ideas, but they didn't know the answer to the question why. So Rory, with all his experience and creativity, he observed what was going on in that cafe and in other cafes around the neighborhood. And he also spoke to a couple of people around. And when he realized that this cafe was actually, you know, that was struggling, never had chairs and tables outside, but other did. And so he told them, instead of just moving, you know, locations or do some, some dramatic changes to the business, just try it, experiment, put some chairs out, you know, and tables and see what would happen. And magic did happen. So people came into the cafe because they thought, oh, okay, if tables are outside, cafe is open like other cafes did. And so the cafe's revenue grew exponentially. And so what he did actually in this is the method that we call uh, ethnography or observation, and we will talk about it a bit later, and also interviewing some folks around. So he was asking them, he wasn't, you know, instead of just brainstorm inside the business owners. And so this is simply, uh, this story is simply demonstrates the fact that market research is really effective way to help you solve business problems by getting the timely feedback from your target audience. So this is like very, this is actually a shortcut, you know, and another, and another message that we want to convey is in, during this presentation is always answers why, and it also gives you wonderful insights in the not just when you launch the product but at the very very earliest stage of product development and it does saves a lot of money and efforts so how to bake the best research 
let's explore. So it is a myth out there that research do doesn't work. And I'm hearing it all the time. Oh, you know what? Like, we don't want, yeah, we don't want to research. You know, it never works. Uh, asking people why, you know, they never uh, reveal their needs and so on and so on. But actually, you just don't know how to bake it properly. You know, they, those people who say it, they don't know what are the right ingredients, you know, to make your souffle rice. You know, what are the right tools you need to use and the right applications of those tools to get the best, re best results for the business. So let's see how to bake a good market research. We've already mentioned earlier there are two, basically two processes that are essential to every business. The one is product development cycle that helps you to develop and launch the products and the marketing cycle that basically takes this product, brand it, promote it. So, and you can see that that's, they never walk separately from each other. They obviously interconnected. And this connection is actually lies in consumer needs, you know, and how this product meeting these needs and how you explain to consumers while your promotion and marketing activities, how this product benefits their needs and what are the key features of this product. And here, where market research can be useful at each stage of the development, either it's product development or communication development. So you can see that this is a, like this nice third circle and it's, it's a process, but it's also a loop which starts with the very earlier idea generation. And um, I, I know that Michaela is here and she's very passionate about using market research at the very earliest stage. And why is just because A, as, as you, saw the, uh, you saw the example of uh, Rory Sutherland and the cafe, you get the, a lot of ideas by just asking a few people around, you know, your target audience. And it will help you to get those ideas at the first place and then develop them and then test them again, you know, uh, test them again. It's just like, it doesn't take much time now and effort to test with all those tools available out there. Uh, so you get your ideas, you, you kind of have some hypothesis, you have some ideas, then you move into the testing phase where research actually help you to select uh, the most viable ideas and then move to the development stage. So see, you already, you already have two stages where you even haven't started investing into the product. So you really put into development only those ideas that have high propensity to, to success in the market. And then of course you develop the product, you test your, you know, you get your elements of the product right, your product itself right, your packaging right, you know, your comps right on the packaging, uh, your advertising right, and the price right, and then you launch. And then you see how did it go in the marketplace. Uh, and then you do the evaluation and here you get again, you get your monetary feedback, but you also get some metrics and you get the feedback from consumers as well. And this feedback goes back and really feeds your new ideas development, new product development. So this just to demonstrate again, uh, the, uh, what I just mentioned earlier, how you can take, you know, the product development through all those stages and where you can, where different types of research can be useful. So you discover ideas, you deep dive, uh, we will talk about interview, we will talk about observations. So you explore, you really like look around, you listen, you observe, you hear, you collect some feedback. Then you go into the testing stage where you might launch more, you know, robust studies like quantitative surveys to select most promising ideas, prioritize them. Then you move into the development stage where you invest the most of your money in there. 
and choose the most promising product options and characteristics and you launch. And as I said, you get the feedback. And the same you can get for the advertising. So uh, the advertising goes through the same stages that the product as well. And um, my point about advertising that I know that uh, we sometimes very much heavily rely on the advertising agencies. So we think, okay, they know, you know, they, they can go and discover ideas. Don't do it, do it together and do it together with consumers. So only this way you will create really punchy advertising and messages and that will really cut through the clutter and deliver the product idea to your target audience. Case study, the real one, is the energy drink by Coca-Cola that uh, called Burn. So that had uh, one of the local market was, it was struggling in one of the local markets, struggling to drive, uh, to grow market share and to drive sales. Um, and, you know, the, the team got get together, explore, did some consumer research and they came with this fantastic idea, which was very simple, is to launch it in the bigger, bigger cans. 500 mils instead of 330 mils that was widespread all over. And so obviously, and they really cracked it because Red Bull then went down the drain, you know, with their sales uh, in the small cans. Um, so what they did uh, at the idea stage, they just got observed, explore and realized that they can actually you know, compete, they are not competing with the, you know, smaller cans like Red Bull, but they competed with the local drinks and also alcoholic drinks that were sold in the bigger packs, in the bigger uh, plastic bottles. So this is where they started and they, after rigorous testing and uh, they got, you know, they launched this pack that uh, managed to grow their share by 50%. Um, so Dodge again, you see, uh, with Elon Musk in the hands. So just to track your attention to the very simple message that research is useful at all stages of the development cycle, starting from the very earliest stage of the idea creation. So, okay, just a couple of slides about uh, key research methods that I used. And, uh, you know, if, if you hear about market research, you think is numerous methods out there, but actually they can all be distilled to only four, two qualitative and two quantitative methods. Qualitative methods are in fact observations where you rather look, observe, listen, you know, capture behavior. And it, it, it came from, from, you know, ethnography and we use ethnography in market research as well as fascinating way to study people's behavior. Uh, it can use in shopper environment as a mystery shopper, you know, observing the shopper behavior or the verbal. So, and they basically capture a non-verbal behavior. Uh, or you can use the interviews, which is verbal methods and focus groups are the, you know, the parts of them and everyone knows about focus groups. You can use one-to-one -one interviews. Now there's very popular, you can do online interviews or expert interviews. Actually combination of those two methods can give you such a valuable insights into, into your business, into the new ideas. Uh, quantitative methods, they rather use for validation. And yeah, I, I, I forgot to mention that never use qualitative methods to validate. To validate. It's not enough people. Uh, use them to create ideas, to generate, to, you know, to do co-creations, but never to validate. To validate, you have a lot of methods that basically, again, is either survey or poll, when you present ideas to consumers or, uh, and you validate your hypothesis, uh, you understand you can forecast 
the demand, uh, you can prioritize, you can evaluate your results. Or it is experiment that what Rory did with the tables outside the cafe. So you place, you do something in the, uh, you know, in, in, either in the real environment, if the cost is low on in the stimulated environment, I, for instance, shop labs or up tests, beta tests and so on. So how to drive the best return of investments with your market research? I will just give you a few examples of the areas of applications of market research and they are all real life examples. So the first one is that actually you can develop a new product and with testing and retesting and you can start with the very earlier idea stage and this is a this is a funny example because we did test the in real life with a few hundred of consumers the idea of the toothbrush with replaceable hats and it was like maybe back 2019 if i'm not mistaken and last year, Colgate actually launched this product in a few of their markets. And I believe it's brilliant. And when we, when we tested, and you can see that was a real sketch that we tested with some description with the consumers, the feedback that we get, got was, well, not everyone needed it. So we knew that the target audience is around only those who use the manual brushes or occasionally go on. came through at the earliest stage of development is that we would use it because it's sustainable. And that's exactly what Colgate did. So the key message that they, um, uh, they, they shared with their consumers is that this is, a, a, you know, this is a sustainable, they help the environment. But also, I personally believe the execution is absolutely brilliant. Um, with, uh, you can see with aluminum handle and those nice, re really sexy looking, you know, has, toothbrush hats. So well done, Colgate. Another example, uh, it's a pretty provocative example. Uh, the, the, the ad that uh, um, Burger King uh, aired uh, last year, and they actually got advertisers, the advertising agency, they got a prize for that ad saying like, wow, that's really great provocative ad. Yes, it was provocative, but the question is, is did it work? Did it work for driving their business forward? And you know what? I doubt it because we tested it and it completely bombed, especially amongst their potential new customers those people who go to McDonald's or, uh, or to the competitive cafes, um, they said that they didn't like the visual. They didn't like, you know, the idea of the, of the, bo of the molded burger at all. And they, on top, they said, I would never ever go to Burger King. So, you know, the cost of testing one advertising can be as, little as less than 1000 pounds you know you can use it you know you can launch it and get the results in a couple of hours but can you imagine how much money did they spend on execution and on media you know thousand millions millions so you know the cost of testing earlier is small the cost of implementing something that actually can even be damaging for your brand is huge so here's the, where the, you know, the weights are. So what would you choose? And the last example is, you know, I think every presentation about failures have this example. But I will just repeat because I think it's so classic. It's like when Tropicana moved from their famous orange to the new packaging and they lost, I think it was 30% immediately. Um, of their of their revenues just because of this slight packaging change. So test and test before you actually make even those steps that you believe could be minor, it can be major. 
So, you know, small things, tables outside the cafe, big impact. And that's really it. Uh, thank you so much for staying with us. And just again, you know, with this beautiful Dodge, just want to remind you that please do research, Re research earlier to reduce uncertainty. You know, it's not just uncertainty for your business, but for you personally, you're working on the business. You know, so that, you know, the fear of failure and the fear of like, you know, that the lots of money will be spent is just will be not there if you research earlier and you know that those ideas resonate with consumers and it will increase the likelihood of success a lot dramatically. So thank you so much. Um, if you like this presentation, please subscribe to um, our Method Academy. And this is a new free, free resource where we will be sharing a lot of stories, a lot methodologies in a very simple way. And uh, stay tuned for the next webinar. And thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Any questions so far? Yeah, just one question, Maria. What's the next webinar all about? Do we have a, a subject? Yeah, that? the next webinar will be about how to research at the earlier stage and how to uh, specifically how to search the new ideas, uh, how to search and validate new product ideas. Great, thank you.